Bravo. King versus Trust. Terran player starts at the top right. Ian Yansu was successful on Frost, the map of his choice. Now he has to play in his opponent's map. It is for Team MVP, Keen, the commander. Struggling today a little bit against Proto so far, but he's not out just yet. He needs to win another map to go to the Constellation match and face his nemesis again. Starting to the bottom left, we have his opponent, Trust. Successful on the first map where he slapped down in an aggressive proxy by Keen. What is he going to do now on Yansu? Trust watched Keen in the late game now. He watched him play the early game twice against uh, Myungshik and get knocked down by Phoenixes. Then he watches Keen play in, in this second game of this series, late game, and sees how strong Keen is there. And if, and if I'm Trust, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about playing late game against Keen again. This is map is a little bit easier for him to do so. But he might, I mean, he might have picked Yunsu because it's a great map for Blink Stalkers. Yep. Uh, that's something to consider going into this this third game because he might be thinking, you know what, Blink might catch Keen off guard. I haven't used that against him exactly just yet. I used it against him when I got a free win on game one. Uh, but we'll see what happens it's here. It's a really dangerous build for a Terran player to face on Yan. So if the opponent goes Blink Stalkers, you have to have the scouting information. You need to know that it's coming so they can prepare accordingly. If you spread yourself out too thin on two bases, it's very difficult to really defend. You need to make sure that you know exactly what your opponent is up to and then you can react maybe with the siege tank, with additional bunkers, just having a really solid defense there that's going to help you. So Keen's job really is to find out what's coming and that's one of the main issues that he's of course trying to deal with by get, adding the Reaper to the game but then also later on we might see that scan in the main base to just double check what's really happening there. Yep, and the, the Reaper wants to identify firstly where's the third pylon if the SCV is not able to see that himself and then uh, is there an Nexus? And the SCV comes around here the back, sees that there's no third pylon just yet. Of course, he wouldn't want to start it this early. That would be too quick. But he sees the two, the one in the, the front, and goes with that reactor expand with the Reaper. Command center will be started in just a moment, as soon as he has the resources for that. And he checks around his base, too, with the Reaper. Probe over here, not going to be a big deal, because he's not making anything with it. And... Keen is like really concerned about proxies. He's looking everywhere right now. And he only saw two pylons so far, so it's reasonable for him to expect. Yeah. Now there's a third one up, but he, he didn't scout that. Yeah, he didn't see it yet. He goes into expansion now, and he still has the Reaper on the map. He scouts everywhere. He wants really to find out, is there some tech hidden somewhere? Did you proxy something? What exactly are you going to do? Just going between those Zalnaga watchtowers, probably going to jump into the main base at some point as well. The SCV over at the Natural is already finding out that there is the attempt to get in base. Going to double check that or confirm it at least with the Reaper. Yeah, he's going to confirm and then he's also going to go see, or do you have a Twilight Council? Um, or a Stargate in your main base? And this probe actually escapes. <laughs> the SCV gets there to chase, you see that? <laughs> For a second, and it really moved around and was like, alright, can I get that? No. I think it caused the probe to go to the right side, which is why it died. It got a little bit too close. Oh wow, he's going to see the robotics here. Well, I don't know if he could have clicked on that. Yeah, he, he goes back a second time to click on it, but yeah, that's awesome. He moves back and he just sees a building, but he couldn't click on it, so he moves back with the Reaper again. Double checks what it is, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty big for him. Goes into triple barracks, doesn't add the eBay because he doesn't need it against oh. Stargate. And this is cool. He, he cancels and switches. Cancels the robe and goes into Twilight. We're gonna see Blink. Yeah, and uh, the two gateways can actually be good against that too. Two Reapers Two made here. Two additional Reapers. Yeah, look at that. Keen is not messing around when it comes to scouting this game. He has literally scouted everything. And he's like, well, what if it's cancelled? I guess I should find out. You know, with two additional Reapers now, you can do a whole lot. It's not only about the scouting. First of all, you can really ensure that you get into your opponent's base. But if you get three Reapers instead of just two, then you also want to do damage. You want to go in there and you can always kill a few probes. If you don't completely mess up or get like surprised by a few units that intercept your Reapers and take them down, you can do quite some damage with that. And that's exactly what he wants to do there. And that will allow him to double check what's happening in the base. He should see that Twilight Council and he should be able to uh, uh, react accordingly. Doesn't have a f Does he have a factory just yet? I don't think he no, does. No, he doesn't have a factory. But uh, he's going to have a lot of Marauder production here. Okay, so Mothership Core is there. That's the first thing he finds out. 
So the Reapers are going to go to the north of the base. Look at the pressure already building up here. Has the Marines there? Ah, damn, loses one of those Reapers. That's really bad for Keen. He wanted to join up with the rest of the Reapers, and then three Reapers in the main base are pretty big. Yep, but well now he still. plates those Stalkers down. And this is important because he's going to be able to see there's a cancel on the Robo. Oh god, Trust doesn't realize. Now he does, and he pulls his units back. He sees the Twilight Council, and he kills so many Harvesters here. I think he got four. Uh, but he loses both of the Stalkers. Uh, bo sorry, both of, both of the Reapers. And just think about what would have happened there if that one Reaper that was trying to move to the left side would not have ran into a few Stalkers. If that Keen, would have happened, it would have been amazing for him. Keen has literally scouted everything now. You know when you scan there? Because you want to see if there's a Dark Shrine there. There's no Dark Shrine there. Now he can reasonably expect without any... There's nothing else it could be but a Blink Stalker all and starts two bunkers in his main base. But the problem is he lost all of his Marines, and this Stalker push is not going to wait. He yep. has to hold like like crazy right now. He has to micro so, so well. Well, he has four Marauders, and he's building two at a time. So he he's also waiting for Blink here, of course. But he has the SCVs ready for the repair. He's not messing around at all. Here might be a Blink, but no, there it is already. There's no repair just yet, but so many Marauders. And one of the Stalkers is down. The Bunker is a goner. One Marauder is being killed. He's trying to push his opponent into a corner. The Marauders with even more damage done. He needs that Stim upgrade, but it's not ready just yet. He kills another Stalker, on the other hand. And the more Marauders he has in the game, the more difficult it's going to be for Trust to really make this work. Such a solid defense so far, though, on the other hand. Worker count is dead even right now, uh, which is a big concern for Trust. Considering he wants to be massively ahead. As soon as Stim is done, this is going to get a lot easier for him. Here we go. Time Warp is beautiful. Right there on those Marauders, it's going to allow his Stalkers to get away. He's going to pick off a few of the Marines on his way out, maybe some SCVs as well. Stim is nearly done. And he kills one, Mar one Stalker on the low ground, and Stim is about to be completed. If Trust goes into the main base of Keen, once again, he will have to deal with Stim. And Concussive Shells, actually, as well, about to be finished, too. True. And uh, the robotics transition here, plus the gas, the natural means that Trust knows this game is not going to end here. He just has to get as much damage done as possible. Trading a Stalker for an SCV is never worth it. And here come the, uh, star, the sorry the Marauders again. Another Stalker goes down. That is Stalker number two. I think he lost the third one as well. Keen's defense here is solid. His tech is looking really good as well. He just needs to make sure he doesn't uh, doesn't get complacent here because it's still not over yet. Forces a, a blink there. Gonna get this pylon. All of his units are low on health. Don't forget. Hey, he stimmed in, and I think for a second he was really thinking about trying to chase down the Stalker army and maybe getting rid of two of them. But with him sniping both of the pylons, he basically put an end to this already. It's two pylons for two bunkers that we can just see here. And the Stalkers and everything else, that was really solid ploy by Keen. Can it's so much DPS. There's no medevacs here, you know? Uh, and he can't stim. Exactly, he can't stim. And the Stalkers are always regenerating shields, something that this Bioforce cannot do. And the Bioforce moves out here. Uh-oh. There's nothing here to defend the Stalkers. Is he just going to trade? Is he going to try to base trade? It what does he think? It looks like it. He just walks across the map. It's, that is unexpected. He's going to try to use SCVs alone to defend this, I guess. Well, there's the bunker again. It's being attacked. One Stalker is down. He's trying to push his opponent back once again. Another Stalker about to die. And he's moving in with the rest of his bio <laughs> force. And there's only one Immortal. And you know that could actually this work. This is crazy enough to work, man. He's going for it. The Immortal is so key here. He has to target on top of those Marauders. SCV is being pulled or rather probes. And there's a time warp. I think this might not have been the right choice. Well, he's losing a lot of harvests now already. But the rest of the Stalkers is already moving back. And the Immortals are being chased away here. He's trying to get the best trade out of this possible. Maybe killing another Stalker in the process. He's focusing on the Zealot first. But suddenly, we have the Protoss player ahead again in overall army supply. The move, not really worth it. He didn't kill no, enough. No, it was not. Turning around was a tough choice to make, though, because if by the time he got back, the damage would have been done. He wouldn't have killed any of the Stalkers. And now, it's interesting to me that Trust doesn't actually bring all of his units to, for the next wave of attacks, because he might be able to end the game with that. Um, something that Keen is expecting here with triple bunkers. He's just going to bring his Stalkers only and keep poking. No cancel on that bunker. Oh, he's, he's going to pick off SCVs here. Yeah, he gets one bunker and now he starts to focus on the SCVs. Nice micro support by Trust as well. Always blinking away and moving his Stalkers back. He doesn't have to commit to an all-in here. He's he's down in economy against Keen, but his tech is so much better. He has Colossi coming out. He has already one Immortal. He has you know the ability to continue upgrades. He starts plus one armor and the Colossus range. And he's always got that Stalker threat. There's nothing that Keen can do to move out to pressure him. And he had to make those three bunkers. Keen wanted too much. He wanted too much. He wanted to cripple his opponent's economy. He was trying to snipe that Nexus again. 
And then he saw that there were too many units coming in from the side. The Mother Shikov with the time warp always also discouraging him a little bit. But his first priority, as you can see, was to try and take the Nexus. I don't know how many Stalkers have died there. It looks like at least one, maybe maybe two, uh, depending on that animation. Second blink gets him away. That's a big stim there. He does have three medevacs out now, so it's not as big of a deal as it was earlier. This is a game that Keen can still win. Yeah. His economy is definitely better. He gets a third command start coming up here. His medevacs were late, but they are coming out too. He's ahead in upgrades. He has the attack upgrade before the armor upgrade is done for trust. It's just that his army composition is going to get less and less effective against this really, really solid Colossus army for trust. If you have no Vikings, there is not really a whole lot they can do against the Colossi. Yes, if there's no meat shield, they can just stim in with the Marauders and try to uh, burst them down. But the problem is the more gateway units we have for trust, the more there is between him and those Colossi. The range upgrade, as soon as he completes, is going to help the Protoss player so far to actually keep them alive. Yeah. A drop, on the other hand, could really change things around, but we already have another pylon being built on the left side of the map because Trust expects a drop at some point to be sent his way. Yeah, uh, this is what we're going to see. Uh, it drops the three of them. It's three or four to the top left are going to try to circumvent any scouts. Three. Well, he's like going way too far to the top left to be safe, but you know, better safe than sorry, I guess. If he gets in the main base, he could actually do critical damage. He finds this group of stalkers going to force a blink. Big stim for that, though. Even stems these units. Yeah, charge upgrade isn't done yet, and we have the Templar Archive on the way. Here come those medivacs. I he think he did. the main, I think. No, here. He sees the pylon. He sees the pylon, and he was scouted by the pylon as well, as far as I could tell. Yeah, but there's nothing at home still. A few zealots well, only. He I has don't to think turn he around. saw. Yeah, I don't think he saw either. There's the overcharge. This is a huge group of units, so these zealots are not enough. And Keen is just going to try to trade here. He's going to get a pretty decent trade. Yeah, he's starting to take down those zealots, but he needs to be careful because those stalkers are really interested in the medivacs. But they are, have, they are over committing a little bit. Nearly died, but he gets away. So he kills a few units, he draws his opponent out once again. A force fields in the middle of the map being used to defend against Keen's main army. That one immortal there that was with the Colossus really helping out. Without that, he probably would have lost the Colossus there. Keen's doing so much at once. This is his multitasking really showing through. Remains ahead in Harvesters almost the entire game, 58 to 57 right now. Plus two, plus two has been started. He's getting ahead in the upgrades, but Storm is halfway done, and uh, Storm is still ignoring upgrades. So this could be exactly what Trust needs. He had some amazing Storms in game number two. A few others failed pretty heavily, though. Yeah, the third command center is uh, is going to be landed and in, in active, but it's the worker count that we had the lead for for Keen is now no longer there, and it didn't matter as much with the third base up for the Prospire, and he was still on two, not getting the best saturation. Two, two slowly inching its way out here for Kane, but like you said, Storm is almost done. Storm doesn't care about upgrades. And there's the Ghost Academy. There's a direct counter to the High Templars with the Snipes and the EMPs. Keen is still very active on the map. He has that task first to the left side. There's still that triple drop that he could utilize at any point in the game. But we also see a few units in Trust's main base just waiting for those medivacs to appear again. Keen is just so active with map vision and scouting this whole game. I just imagine him with like binoculars strapped to his forehead right now, like with <laughs> what she's been looking. Um, he's also gonna do a little bit of damage here. Finds an empty worker line, goes and kills some probes. Gonna get out. Yeah, getting five in total, I think. Not even a little bit more than that, but he loses the drop in the process. Yeah, kills a stalker. It was okay. It was a decent trade there. He's just going to f find another opening. He wants to maybe go into the main base or go to the natural. Yeah, that wall prism is not going to have a good time. There are already Vikings on the way to take it down and a few bio units too. So yeah, that's not going to do anything at all. It does force Keen into his main base though, whereas Trust is getting into position to attack a possible fourth base or third base location here. And there's not enough answer for these Colossi right where this army is right now. Stalker's blinking forward. This is really scary for Keen right now. This army composition is something he doesn't want to fight directly, not without bunkers, not without the, the Vikings, and also maybe a few EMPs. Snipes nice. off on those Templar. Really, really important. Goes. Nice! High ground ghosts here against the High Templar. It's a bad position for Trust to have those. And now, of course, the Vikings are also trying to do their best to keep those Colossi at bay and uh, always utilizing their range. A run by at the third base with a couple of Zealots is going to do a lot of damage to the economy of Keen. Those SV have no production. Nope, no, uh, no units in that bunker. Of course, that's, that's a bit of an oversight there, not loading that up. Decent Storm goes off here. I think he lost his High Templar, though, for it. Uh, and the army size here is... If you look at numbers, it's not it's not really that different, but if you look at the cost of the army and the efficiency of the army, it's definitely better for Trust with all these Storms, the Colossi, and his upgrades are, are starting to catch up with Keen. Fourth base being built by the Protoss player. Now, at the same time, he's sending in another War Prison that has been spotted by the Floating Factory that we see there. 
So he can just send the Vikings over again to take it out and already units on the way into the main base. But we have Trust just gathering up his units. He just has map control right now. He's constantly pressuring with his, yep. with his army. That's why he gets that fourth base during this. He keeps getting the harass off. The fourth prism goes down, but the damage has been done. Plus, at the third base over here, damage is being done, but oh, oh no! The main army, on the other hand, is really going to be taking apart here, but the Storms are super good this time. The Vikings getting the conquer that they need, on the other hand, having a really good position against those Colossi. Oh, and no. all of them are already gone. The problem is the economy for Keen is suddenly in tatters. Yeah, the economy for Keen is in tatters, and he sat under that storm as if he thought he was going to be able to win the fight regardless. Now he loses his economy and most of his army. Fourth base is up for trust. He's continuing his upgrades. Zealots are cleaned up, but he's still got this massive death ball of Protoss right outside Keen's front door, and he's starting to pick off reinforcements. Oh, this is the key game for both of them. Whoever loses this on this map is going down to Code B again. It's out of Code A and Code S, and this is looking more and more like Trust might be the one to advance to the consolation match here. Keen with the time warp against him, trying to run away from those storms. The storms are hitting home. The Vikings, they can't do anything anymore. They're not going down in assault mode, trying to help out, but there's the GG. GG. Trust goes to the consolation match. He is going to face Mingsik, and we have Keen dropping out of the group. Keen will go back to Code B. Uh, like every player in this group except Symbol, though, he does have Pro League matches he can play in. It's not going to be the end for him until next season. But he definitely wanted that Code S spot back. He wanted to be able to be in the spotlight and the hardest league in the world. Regardless, this isn't it yet for Trust. He still has to play uh, that Protoss versus Protoss you talked about. We're only getting one Protoss out of this group today. Yeah. One Protoss is definitely going to get out, and uh, that makes for the fourth Protoss to advance to the uh, to Code S out of the Code A groups that we have for uh, three. Yeah. So it's either going to be Ming Swick or it's going to be Trust. Trust, one of the two. And neither of them have played a Protoss versus Protoss in this group. They avoided yeah. each other until the end. So it's really hard to call which one of these players is going to have the advantage, which one's going to be feeling better. Um, Mengshik definitely gonna have a little bit more time to rest and prepare, but he didn't watch any PVPs or anything like that. It's just like he's yes. not playing at this moment in time. Mengshik had really solid builds though, but before we head into that game, we are of course having another short commercial break and then it's time for the last best of three in our Group D. We have another group coming on later today at 6pm Korean Standard Time, but now we're having a short break and then we're back with the last best of three here in the series.